have your Bibles with you, we'd ask that you turn uh, to Matthew, Matthew chapter 17, and we're going to begin reading in the very first verse, Matthew 17, beginning in the very first verse, the Bible says, and after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto him Moses and Elias talking with him. Then, he, then, then answered Peter and said unto him, Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. While yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye Him. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank You for Your mercy and Your kindness to us. Lord, we praise You for all that You do. Lord, this morning we pray that You speak to us through Your Word. Lord God, we pray that You stir us up, that You cause us to understand and know who You really are and what You really are about, Lord. Lord, we pray uh, for the lost that meet among us, Lord, that You might save them, uh, that You might manifest Yourself to them according to Your mercy and grace, we pray it. Amen. Now, we'll be preaching on the thought this morning, how do you see Jesus? How do you perceive Him? How do you look at Him? And I'm not necessarily talking about images, but sometimes if we're not real careful, we begin to think about uh, maybe some physical characteristics that the Lord Jesus had. And, and let me say a couple of things about that. Number one, the Bible is very, very clear. He says, little children... Keep yourself from images. In other words, we don't we don't know what the Lord looked like, and, and we have no business uh, of interpreting that. Uh, the statues that Catholics put out is blasphemous. It, it should not and ought not to be so. Any kind of form whatsoever of the Lord. And then the other thing. I will tell you, the Bible says very clearly he was without form or comeliness. He was not a, an attractive man, as some may purport, because, see, uh, the very best of the best was to be offered for the yearly sacrifice, which he did meet the qualifications. But if you, if you remember, by that time and point, they were offering the maimed and the halt. Right. And in addition to that, he, uh, he met it spiritually. He, 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 he met it physically, but He met it spiritually. And, and so as we, as we look into how you perceive the Lord Jesus, don't necessarily uh, get into images, but we always think about that somehow because there's descriptions of when the Lord Jesus was seen. Uh, in the first verse, and after six days... Now what had occurred in the previous thing, and you can read it for your reading this week, uh, at the end of, that, of the 16th chapter, what had occurred, He had revealed to them uh, the plan of the sacrifice. He had revealed to them that I must be offered, I must die, but I'll live again. He had revealed to that, and, and remember Peter said, no, I, I don't want it to happen. And he said, get thee behind me, Satan. And so we see that after this, a week later, six days later, that He takes a select few. And after six days, Jesus taketh, meaning He had selected them, Peter, James, and John, His brother. Now I want you to see, not the Lord's brother, uh, Peter's brother, he, uh, he handpicked. You know, all through the Bible, if you will look through it, you will find that Jesus had a very specific plan and He dealt with a very specific people. And so He chose those individuals that would see Him bodily, uh, that would see Him transfigured, that would see Him transformed. And the ones that He chose was the inner circle and, and He knew what they were made out of. And you know what? The Lord knows what you're made out of too. 
He knows why you're here this morning. He knows when we're not here, why we're not here. And, you know, sometimes I think we garner excuses for that. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. Now, two things there. He separated them, and He separated them by climbing a mountain. Uh, it wasn't a road. You know, uh, if you want to see Jesus in a specific way, it's going to cost you a little bit of effort. Yeah. If you want to be close to Him, and you want to be near unto Him, it's going. you know what? Prayer is work. Prayer is work. If you really want to get a hold of God, and it's not one of these little vain repetitions... It's going to be a work involved in prayer when you get a hold of the Lord God. And so, with that thought, they, the one reason they got to go is He selected them. And another reason they got to go, they were willing to work for it. They were willing to go up the hill. Typically, Baptists don't like work. But you know what? In the service of the Lord, there is a great deal of work. There's a great deal that's to be done. And, and so we see that they were willing to do that. And it was apart. It, it was separate than the rest. You know what? Uh, you, you're only going to be as close to the Lord as you are separate from this world. Yeah. In addition to being modest and looking like a, God's people ought to look, the reason behind separation is because you'll get nearer to Him. As long as you're overflowed by this world, the Lord God's not going to have anything to do with you because you know why? He don't put His approval on sin. He never has and He never will. Uh, it's, it's a violation of His character. And so we as the Lord's people, we are certainly ought to stand, understand and know it was a great privilege to do what they did. And, and was transfigured before them. I think Mark's Gospel says His visage changed. Uh, and so... Uh, they got to the top of the mountain and He took on His godly form. Uh, that, that, that was an incredible thing to see. And, and you know what? Uh, the Lord God Jehovah told Moses, no man can see Me and live. And He, he asked, uh, He said, I'll let you to see the hinder parts, but He didn't look at the Lord God face to face. Because he would have died if that had been the case. And even looking at the hinder parts, it impacted him the rest of his life. He had a veil on for the rest of his life because he was so bright. You know what? When you really see Christ, it ought to impact you that you would be different for the, very, for the rest of your life as long as you live. That's how, that's how it impacted Moses once Moses seen the deity of God. And so here they're actually... He, 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 he switches from from Jesus the man and to Jesus the, the, the very Son of the living God in His form of deity before Him. And, and I can imagine it said that there was a great... Uh, that, that it was unbelievable to see what they saw. And He was transfigured before them. And this is part of what they saw. And His face did shine as the sun. There was a brightness about Him. And His raiment was white as light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him, meaning Christ. Now, I don't know the content of this conversation. I, I think it was for the benefit of those three inner circle. I'll give you another thought. I believe it was a, another indication of a gear shift from the old law unto Christ. Because, you know, when it was all over, the only, two stand, the only one standing there was Christ. You know what? Uh, you can't keep the Judeo law. You cannot do it. This flesh will not allow it. The Bible says it's a schoolmaster. You know what? That night I saw on the internet that a woman said uh, that a lot of Paul's writings was incorrect. You know what? That's blasphemous. Either they are the Word of God or they're not. You can't pick and choose. And the reason that she had stated this is because uh, somebody quoted to her because she's a law keeper that the law is a schoolmaster. And you know what? It upset her because the reason why she had an answer that with her. And so the only way that she could answer that was to defunct the Word of God. And she said, Paul wasn't... Uh, Paul, in fact, she said, Paul was the first pope. 
Mm. That, that was her answer to that. And you know what? Uh, uh, today people are still denying that, but to me this is a clear illustration that they were moving from the days of the law unto the days of Christ. And, and uh, verse 4, Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Now, anytime God meets with you, it's good to be here. Amen. Yeah. And he knew that. He, he had witnessed God. He had witnessed the transfiguration. And you know what? Peter couldn't have been more right. It was a good thing for them to be there. It was an incredible thing that he beheld the deity of the Lord Jesus. But notice what he says. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles. One for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elisha or Elias. See, uh, they were not to be worshipped. Moses is a type of the law. He brought it down from the mountain. They were not to be worshipped. Elisha was a prophet when no one else would tell them the truth. But they were not to be worshipped. You know what? Uh, that defunct's the Pope, don't it? Men are not to be worshipped. Not even the very best preacher you can think of as you're sitting there. They're not to be worshipped in any way. And, and so we see then, uh, as the Lord Jesus is manifested, He, he really does two things. He's, he's in this gear shift mode under grace. And we see what happens in verse 5. And while He yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye Him. So, I want you to notice two things. If you know your Bible, what led the nation of Israel back in the Exodus? Fire by night, cloud by day. So the Lord, the Lord God manifested Himself in a way that, that those Jewish boys there ought to recognize that's God. That's the cloud of God. That's the very leadership of God. And then on top of that, He says, This one is My Son in whom I am well pleased. And so we find that they saw Christ differently after that. And... Uh, you need, you need to really recognize how you see Christ. Fixing to get into Christmas. Very, very blasphemous time. People can say what they want to about that holiday, but there's nothing biblical whatsoever about it. Yeah. And if we honor it, we honor it, right? And so we find then... <laughs> That a lot of people get conjure up images along that line. And I'll give you a good example in the Gospel of Luke. Uh, how do you how do you see Jesus? The Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verse 11. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verse 11, the Bible says, and this is the Lord God, uh, the angels really announcing to the shepherds, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Now, get, get the full image of this. And again, how do you think about Jesus? Can you imagine the sky full of angelic beings? Because that's what was occurring. It says, And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, and, and filling the skies of angelic beings. You know what? That ought to have got their attention, and it did. That, that ought to have stirred them up and understood, hey, listen, we're dealing with something miraculous. We're dealing with something great. We're dealing, we're dealing with something that's not been seen hitherto. Verse 12, And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, and lying, swaddling clothes, lying in manger. Now, I want you to look at the, the thing that they're going to see, and instead of miraculous, it's very common. Uh, swaddling clothes, 
Your mothers are all swaddling your babies whether you realize it or not. That's when you wrap the blanket pretty tight. You know how they get fussy when they're moving their arms and kicking their legs. You, you swaddle them so they get calmed down. Uh, they, he was just wrapped up in a blanket. You know what? It makes you wonder if he really had clothing. He, he says you're going to find it in swaddling clothes, a cloth, and you're going to find it in a manger. In a place where they feed, uh, where, where, where they, where they uh, feed the, ho- the horses and feed the cows, that's where you're going to find Him. And, and you know what? The, the picture of that is this. A very, very humble beginning. That's a picture. A uh, very, a very flesh like a very, and not only a carnal beginning, a very lowly carnal beginning. All of our children were born in a little hospital. Kind of an humble beginning. Something very small. He says, this is how you're going to find Him. This will be the key note that He's there. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them unto he- into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass which the Lord hath made known unto us. Now, uh, again, as we're p- approaching this end of the year stuff, that's how most people see Christ. <coughs> That's how most people see Him. That's what they think of. And and you know what? He's not there no more. He's not present in the manger. He's not a little baby. He rose a victorious victor over all things. He doesn't belong there. And you know what? I remember when we was giving up the Christ Mass at my own house, the very last thing we did, uh, because we got rid of the tree because of Jeremiah 10, and then we, we thought, well, we'll do a little nativity. You know what all that mess is? It's images. That's all it is. It, you may think it's holy and benign, but you know, uh, you know where it comes from? It comes from Catholicism. Yeah. We had no we had no vision whatsoever to be involved with that. And, and finally we got rid of that too. He is not there. How do you see Jesus? How do you perceive him? How do you look upon him? When you think, when you think of the man named the Lord Jesus, what do you think about? And I'm afraid, very, very frequently, what we think about is not who He is. I, I'm afraid that when we think about where He's at, we don't think about where He is. Because you know what? He's not here. A lot of people think that Jesus is right here. He's not. You know who your comforter is? The Holy Ghost. He said, I will send you a comforter. And you ever thought about those 40 days that was without nothing? Because they were. They, they had nothing. The Lord God was at His throne. The Lord Jesus had gone back to glory. And the Holy Ghost had not yet come home. You, you talk about an empty 40 days. That's what it was. And, and, and that's why He says, you stay here until you're in the power from on high. Because you know what? They really had nothing. They, they didn't have anything at that time. And, and so then we as the Lord's people, you really need to get a thought and a mind. How do you see the Lord Jesus? Go over to the Gospel of John. Now this is another one that really burns me. John chapter 19, and we'll begin the first verse. Then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him. Now, scourging was horribly painful. A scourging took most of the life of the individual that was scourged. They they took a cut of nine tails, which was a whip with nine different uh, different branches on it, and into those branches was embedded rock and bone and, and glass, and they would lay it across the back and pull it back and take the hide and the flesh and all. So that, that little simple statement 
<laughs> and he scourged him. Doesn't really almost because we don't understand scourging in modern day. It doesn't give justice to what the Lord Jesus looked like when he was done. A lot of times their liver fell out their back after a, a scourging. And you know, uh, Pilate makes me sick in his ceremonial washing his hands, and then he, then he turns around and beats the Lord Jesus nearly to death. You know what? That, that's a blasphemous act too. Don't you apologize to Christ and then around, turn around and slap His face. Don't you come down to the Lord's house and go out that door and live like a dog. It's the same thing. And, and, and so we, we as Lord's people, uh, sometimes we do that inadvertently, maybe without intent. And the soldiers uh, plighted a crown of thorns and put it on His head and they put him on a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. And Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you that you may know that I find no fault in him. Well, why did he beat him if he didn't find fault in him? Verse 5. Then Jesus... Then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said, Behold the man. You know what? What a wonderful thing if we can behold the Lord Jesus. Can you imagine those Jewish believers looking at His disfigured, uh, bleeding body because He already had the crown of thorns and blood coming down the face and blood coming off the back and having this little robe, this mockery robe like a crown, I mean like a king, and saying, here He is. Look on Him. You know what? We need to look on the Lord Jesus this morning. We, we need to look within ourselves and, and find out why we came to the Lord's house this morning. And we need to, we need to look on the Lord Jesus. Uh, how do you perceive Him? You know what? I think a lot of times we come just because. You know, as a preacher, I have to be very cautious not to come just to be heard. You know what I mean? That that come on on a on, on the premise to present what the Lord gives me as a messenger and a messenger alone. And, and if it goes well, praise be to God. And if it doesn't, that's just simply how it is. I'm not here to impress anyone. That's how we're to come. Verse six. And the chief priest, therefore, in the offers saw Him and cried out, Crucify Him! Crucify Him! And Pilate said unto Him, Take ye Him and crucify Him, for I find no fault in Him. And, Jesus, uh, and the Jews answered Him, We have a law, and by our law He ought to die, because He made Himself the Son of God. And Pilate therefore heard the saying, He was more afraid, and went again into the judgment hall and said to the Jesus, whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then, then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not to, unto me? Knowest not that I have the power to crucify thee and have the power to release thee? And Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all except it were given him, given thee from above. And, you know what? That will make us tremble and shake because you know why you're here this morning? Because it gives you the opportunity. Yeah. You know why you were born into a family that serves God? Because He placed you there. Do you know why? Do you know why you are uh, you have an inward desire sometime to hear the preached word of God? Because He granted it. Nothing more, nothing less. You know what? We as the Lord's people need to understand what a privilege it is to be in the house of God. Uh, to hear preaching. To to have his word, a full copy of the entire Bible at our disposal at any time. We want to give the Lord great praise and great honor for that because not everyone has that. And so uh, he says, you only have the power, you only have the gift because I give it to you. Therefore, he that delivered me unto, uh, unto thee <laughs> had the greater sin. And thenceforth Pilate sought to release him, 
But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. In other words, we're going to call the boss on you. Verse 13, When Pilate therefore heard the saying, he brought Jesus forth and, and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew tongue, Gabbatha, and it was, it, it was the preparation of the Passover about the sixth hour, and he saith unto the, G, the Jews, Behold your king. Now, I want you to see now they're on a, on a timetable. Because uh, at sundown, all the Jews have to be in the house. At, at dark time, they have to be making their preparation. So, about the sixth hour is about our, our noon. And, and now they're on a, a timetable to get the job done. And they know it, and Pilate knows it. Verse 16, Then delivered He them therefore unto them to be crucified, and they took Jesus and led Him away. And He bearing His cross went forth into a place, uh, called, into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha. And they crucified Him with, <laughs> and two other with Him on either side one, and Jesus in the midst or the middle. Now, I want you to see that in doing this, He, uh, he fulfills Jeremiah's prophecy saying, I was numbered with the transgressors. See, they transgressed the law in, in, in their fever. And so He's put right in the middle of them. You know what? That ought to create a horrific picture in your mind. Uh, I've seen a few, not many, I've seen a few people die from trauma. Just mutilated. Car wreck, usually. And uh, I've seen some you couldn't even recognize. I won't say his name because everybody knows him. But there was a man, his last name was Wallace, and that covers a host of people here in the county, so that doesn't matter. But he was in a wreck out here. Uh, almost to the county line years ago when I worked for the ambulance service. And when we picked him up, the other, the other person that was in the ambulance with him was good friends with him. And he was so distorted that he didn't even recognize who he was. And I grabbed the man's wallet and I looked at it and I said, oh, this is who he is. And I showed it to the other attendant and he says, it can't be. But you know what? It was. His visage had been changed. He had been mutilated. He'd gone through the window of the truck and hit a post once he was ejected from the vehicle. And it was, you know, that was the Lord Jesus. That, that don't even compare to what the Lord Jesus endured on that day. That, that's a horrific scene. But you know what? Blessed be to God. Despite what the Catholics and her daughters do, He is not on the cross. Despite the bloodiness of the situation, that blood is dried. It, see, the blood accomplished its purpose, so we don't, we don't have to look on it. We don't have to see it. His body, the sacrifice, had been transformed. He's not like that anymore. He, he's not on the cross. He's not up there anymore. And so, when you think of the Lord Jesus... Do not think of Him as on the cross. Do not think of Him when you see Jesus as the man on the cross. Acts chapter 8. Excuse me, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. The Bible says, the Lord Jesus speaking... But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and upon the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. Now, can you imagine that scene, giving them the great commission? And then just grab it and turn the loose and start ascending. You know what? That thrills my heart. 
Oh, I, I would have loved to have seen that one. Uh, you know what? I'm a little bit weary. I, I, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I, I, I don't, I, I'm glad I didn't see the crucifixion. But man, when gravity cut loose and He began to go up, Lord, I would have loved to have seen that one. Proven that He was the very Son of God. And going back to Him <laughs> the easy way. Well, what a thrill that would have been. <laughs> but them, like us, let's, let's read on. They kind of have the... Uh, <laughs> focusing on the wrong thing. And while He had... And when He had spoken these things, while they beheld, He was taken up in a cloud, and a cloud received Him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven... As he went up, behold, two men stood by him in white apparel, which also said, You men of Galilee, why stand you gazing into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you see him go into Amen. heaven. Amen. In other words, uh, this image is gone. I would have loved to have seen it, but you know what? It's gone. He said, listen, now y'all have work to do. You, you have some things to get done. He said, you go into the, all the world. And, and he meant what he said. Why are you gazing at an image? You know what? What I'd love to see, tell uh, those pitiful uh, people who live in ignorance and, and literally call down the Via Del Rosa is what are you doing? He's not here. There's no merit in this place. He's in glory. Man. Why stand you gazing? You know what people that are caught up in images today, uh, all I can say to them is, what are you looking at? Yeah. I knew two different people. One of them was a CNA and one of them was a nurse. One of them had a friend who was a nurse and the nurse committed suicide. She was from this county. And uh, another CNA went over to her house and was completely creeped out. Because in her front room, she had this huge place, had candles all around it, and a picture of this nurse that had died, and she was worshiping. I mean, literally worshiping. You know what? That wasn't that person. That person was out of eternity. Yeah. Wasn't here. The Lord Jesus Christ is not here. And then uh, they, they had another friend, uh, nurse friend, whose brother died. Very same thing. And even to the point that she would burn, you know, incense and candles to her brother's image. You know what that is? That's idolatry. Right. In, in the frankest, most obvious form. You know what I said to her? He's not here. He's dead. He's out into eternity. You know what the Bible says? As soon as we're dead, we're in eternity. Don't you be duped by soul sleep. That, that, that's another Catholic fable. Because see, when the rich man died, immediately he was in hell. Yeah. And immediately, huh, Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom. That's a boom. No soul sleep. No, no. You know what? When y'all lay my bones out here beside the church building one day, all that's going to be there is my bones. All that's going to be there is my body. My livelihood, the soul of me, will be at glory already at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not there. Not present. You know what? We ought to thrill. It ought to thrill our soul at the thought of seeing the Lord Jesus. So basically, the Lord was saying, get it in gear. Go do what I bid you to do. Go into all the world and preach my gospel. Get it out there. Don't get hung up on images. Don't, don't get stuck on what you think that I might look like. Look at me in the book of Revelation. Now, uh, whether you want to accept it or not, the revealing is a book of images. He both heard, John the Apostle heard, and he saw, did he not? So, whether, whether you want to really accept that or not, to the very best of his ability, and he was, he was uh, limited by the ability of the flesh, 
But he wrote down what he saw. He wrote down and described the things that he, that he could perceive was going on. So that is an image. That is what he saw and, and he wrote it down uh, by the inspiration of the Lord God to be the revealing of the last times. Now, with that said, Revelation chapter 1 verse 12, And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one likened to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about with pipes with a golden girdle. Now here we find an image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, some say uh, the seven golden candlesticks was the seven churches of Asia. And the Bible says he was walking in and among about those, about those candles in, in, in the throne room of God. Now, I really believe that the Lord Jesus, again, in, 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 the Bible says in, in uh, the book of Hebrews, he's sitting at the right hand of God. But see, he, uh, he was walking in and, you know what? Uh, <laughs> kind of makes you wonder, you know, he, he knows what's going on in this assembly this morning. He knows if you plugged in or plugged out. He knows if you came to be seen or came to hear from God. Yes. He, he, he knows those things. Does that make Him here? No. But the Holy Ghost can be here if He so chooses. And, and so we see the Lord Jesus Christ uh, the, ne the next figure we have of Him is walking in and among these candlesticks that are a token. <laughs> and, and you know what? I have to believe this. There must be a candle for New Testament. Because you know what? He says, <laughs> He told Laodicea, don't let your candle go out. So have you ever wondered what ours might look like? Everybody's used candles in here. And you know how when it's getting toward the bottom, the flame gets bigger, but it puts out more smoke. And you know what? The light is actually dimmer than it was because it's not up high anymore. It's not up here on the top. You know, you know where I want our, ours to be? Right up here. And, and, and it can be if we stay focused. If, if we don't accept... You know why churches go out of existence? Number one, they accomplish the purpose. But number two it is this. People began to define success like the world does. Oh, you! If, if you have the building packed out, it'll all be good. You know what? I don't believe a word of it. I've been in churches that were packed out and, and, and the Holy Spirit wasn't there. You know what? They had an empty house despite how many people they had there. And I, I attended a lot of meetings like that. And you know what? I didn't come home thrilled because there was a building full of Bibles. I came home empty. And so in, in the assembly that we have this morning, if God meets with us and fills the house, that's all we need. That's all. That ought to be the only desire in your heart is that God might meet with us. Verse, uh, uh, verse fourteen. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as the snow, and his eyes were as the flame of fire, and his feet black and fine brass, as if it burned in a furnace. And his voice is the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars out of his mouth with a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shining in his strength. Now that, that is what the Lord Jesus looks like. You don't see a little baby. You don't see a person on the cross. But you see a mighty, mighty king walking in and among and out of his people. That's the Christ that you are to see. See, when I go to the Lord Jesus in prayer, that's the Christ I want defending me. That's the Christ I want to bring my petitions before his Father. 
Because he's victorious. He, uh, he's a victor. He, he, listen, he won. And we ought to praise Him for that. You know, despite the circumstances that are down here, and despite to us what might appear to be defeat, listen, this old United States probably is going to go down the tubes because it's wicked from the White House right down to the uh, to the street that you live on. And you know what? It'll probably go down the tubes because Christ will judge it. Listen, that's okay because He won. You know what? If you live to see a different government rise up, Christ still won. He's still victorious. He, he's, still, he's still on the throne even this morning. Verse 17, And when I saw Him, I fell as, at His feet as dead. And He said, and, and He laid His right hand upon me, saying, Fear not, I'm the first and the last. I'm Alpha and Omega. See, uh... That's the beginning of the end. When the Lord God said, let there be light, Christ was there. And when we fall at His feet someday, Christ will be there. And in the millennial reign, He'll be honored for a thousand years as King of kings and Lord of lords, literally on the throne in Jerusalem. And then, the out of the ceaseless ages, He'll be honored again. That's the Christ I see. That's the Christ I want to perceive. That's the Christ that, that keeps me motivated on days when I'd rather quit. That's the Christ that, that, that gives me strength to start up another day and say, listen, there's a King coming. Listen, there's a way unto, uh, unto the Lord God. And it is by the blood of Christ. There, <clears throat> let me tell you about my friend named Jesus. That's what keeps me going. And it ought to be that of every other individual. Very quickly to the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 24. Luke 24 in uh, verse 13. And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which, from, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all the things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together, in reason, Jesus Himself drew near and went with them. But their, but their eyes were holding that they should, not, to, they should not know Him. And He said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered and said, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and is not known the things which are come to pass in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, whom was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priest and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, which, and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been He which would have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not His body, they came saying that they had seen a vision of angels and that He was alive. And certain of them which are with us were to with us at the sepulcher and found it <laughs> even so the women said oh that they and the women said but they saw him not and he said unto them O fools and slow of heart to believe all the prophets which have spoken so we see very very often that we don't perceive Jesus they walked with him they talked with him and they just didn't understand who He was. You know, uh, I'm fearful a lot of people are in that cart today. That's your problem with saying this little prayer. They know about Jesus, but they don't know Jesus. They can literally be walking with Him and they never identified with Him. You know what? If all you have is a sinner's prayer, I'd make my call on the election sure. If you're, you know, when they were just a little further down, when they were on their way back 
right before they left from Jerusalem, they said, did our hearts not burn within us? See, that's evidence of redemption, is when your heart burns. And know without a shadow of a doubt that you literally have spent time with the Son of the living God. Amen. I, I didn't have that. I would be a man most miserable. See, everything else can fall apart. And as long as I have that, I'll be okay. What about you? How do you see Jesus? How do you perceive Him this morning? It's all important. Well, Jesus.